Tonight we continue our exploration into our magnificent brain with a look at disorders of movement. They're associated with changes in the brain cells that help us move. These changes can affect the speed, quality, and ease of movement. The two disorders we will focus on are Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease. Parkinson's disease was first described in 1817 by the British physician James Parkinson. Approximately one million people in the United States alone are afflicted. Parkinson's onset is typically subtle and most commonly develops between the age of 55 and 65. Its cardinal features include tremors, difficulty moving, slowness of movement, and muscular stiffness. Symptoms result when nerve cells in a part of the brain that produces dopamine fail and deteriorate. There is currently no cure for Parkinson's disease. Huntington's disease is much more complex than Parkinson's. It affects a more diffuse area of the brain. It is a hereditary neurological disorder first described by the American physician George Huntington in 1872. Individuals with the inherited mutant gene typically see the first signs of illness in early middle age. Like Parkinson's, Huntington's symptoms develop gradually over time. It causes a progressive degeneration of cells in the brain and slowly impairs a person's ability to walk, think, and talk. There is currently no cure. Tonight, I am joined by two people who deeply understand Parkinson's and Huntington's. Sam Posey is a retired race car driver and a television commentator for ABC Sports. He has had Parkinson's disease for 18 years. Alan Gorin is a retired physician and professor at Harvard Medical School and the Dana-Farber and Children's Hospitals. At age 59, he was diagnosed with Huntington's disease. They will each share their personal experiences and insight into their conditions. Also joining me, a remarkable group of scientists, Stanley Fon. He is a professor and director of the Center for Parkinson's Disease and Other Movement Disorders at Columbia University Medical Center. Ann Young is a professor at Harvard Medical School. Stanley Prusiner is a Nobel laureate and runs the Institute for Neurodegenerative Diseases at the University of California, San Francisco. And once again, my co-host is Dr. Eric Kandel, a Nobel laureate, a professor at Columbia University, and a Howard Hughes medical investigator. We're going to discuss Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease, two degenerative diseases of the nervous system that affect movement. Uh, what is interesting about these disorders is their history. Uh, if we consider autism, which is a program we did recently, that was discovered 60 years ago. We've had beautiful, detailed, insightful descriptions of Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease that go back over 150 years. James Parkinson, in 1817, described six families that had what he called shaking palsy. The three defining features of the disease are that they have a tremor at rest, uh, they have an abnormal posture, and they have muscular weakness. Uh, this description was so detailed and so excellent that physicians soon were able to characterize the disease and see exactly what Parkinson saw, and they renamed the disease from shaking palsy to Parkinson's disease. But it was a long time before we began to understand what some of the mechanisms underlying the disease was. It was only around 1960 we began to realize the disease is caused by the fact that there's a death of dopaminergic neurons in a substantia nigra. Dopamine is a modulatory system in the brain that affects the striatum, which is a key structure involved in motor coordination. We now know that a lot of the treatments that are available for it are based upon this initial deep insight. Um, Huntington's disease was discovered 50 years later, about uh, 1870. George Huntington, a Columbia-trained physician, very astute, had the insight, looking at families in Long Island, that there were, it was a hereditary disease that he encountered, which also affected motor movement. And the defining features of that were that it was genetic, a hereditary disease, number one. Uh, that number two, there were uh, adventitious involuntary movements. And number three, that it went beyond the motor system to also affect cognition and sometimes alterations in personality. The clinical picture alone suggests uh, this disease goes beyond the striatum. It also involves the cerebral cortex. It involves the hippocampus, a structure involved in memory storage, and sometimes hypothalamus as well as uh, the cerebellum. Uh, 
progress in this disease also was very, very slow. And it was really until about 1968 uh, that one began to make progress in it. And this owes a great debt to the Hereditary Disease Foundation, which Milton Wexler founded. Milton Wexler was a very well-known psychoanalyst living in Los Angeles whose wife had Huntington's disease. Uh, so he started a foundation with a double purpose in mind. One is to get resources to do basic science, uh, and the other was to try to direct the science in a productive way. And since this was a hereditary disease, the key idea was to try to define the gene that was responsible for hunting disease. This was in the early years of trying to do gene sequencing and gene cloning. So this was a very daring effort. In 1983, they were able to localize the gene for hunting disease to chromosome 4, to the very tip of the chromosome. An international consortium of sort of gene hunters formed and in 1993, they isolated and sequenced the gene. That was an enormous advance because with the gene, they could pop it into uh, mice and into uh, flies and into worms and study, you know, mechanisms of pathogenesis, how the gene does its harm. And they learned an enormous amount about this. Moreover, as they began to look at these disorders, they realized that in addition to the clinical similarity, they both affect uh, motor systems and they both share certain anatomical features in common, there also is an interesting similarity in the way the proteins that are involved in the disease become abnormal. They realized this is a protein folding disorder and that it belonged to a larger family of protein folding disorders, which were pioneered by Stan Prusner. Sam Prusner described Jakob Kreutzfeldt disease many years before that as a disease that involves protein misfolding. And we now realize that in addition to Jakob Kreutzfeldt disease, Alzheimer's disease that you and I talked about, frontotemporal dementia, in addition to Parkinson's disease uh, and hunting disease, are protein folding disorders. What does that mean? That means the protein can exist in two conformations. One is a normal conformation in which it does its normal physiological function, but it flips into the abnormal conformation, it forms aggregates. And these bundles of proteins are toxic. They kill cells. Moreover, they're also released by the cell, taken up by other cells, and in turn, these aggregates kill the cells that take them up. So this is a way of propagating the disease, extending it throughout different parts of the nervous system. This is a profound insight. Uh, which allows us to think that there may be a unifying theme connecting these disorders and perhaps allowing us to get a completely new therapeutic approach to this. So we're going to have a really terrific opportunity to discuss this.